Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today, I'll be breaking down the biggest RRSP mistakes to avoid in Canada. The RRSP, the Registered Retirement Savings Plan, is one of the most powerful investing tools available to everyday Canadians to fund their retirement. If used correctly, you can reduce your tax bill and build long-term wealth for the future, but the rules can be confusing and a lot of Canadians are not using the RRSP correctly. In this video, I want to address some of the most important mistakes about the RRSP that you might not be aware of and could be costing you a lot of money in the long run. Make sure you watch my previous two videos, RRSP Explained, where I go over how the RRSP works, the rules to follow, tax deductions, withdrawals, and my investing strategy to get the most out of your tax sheltered growth. Click the pop-up at the top right or click the link in the box below to watch those videos first to learn what you should do in an RRSP. This video is all about what you should not do in an RRSP. As a super quick summary, the RRSP is a tax sheltered account designed to fund your retirement. The RRSP offers two main benefits. One, it allows your investments to grow tax-free. This is extremely powerful and your investments will grow much faster inside an RRSP than they would in a non-registered account. The second benefit is that the RRSP allows you to defer your taxes for years or decades until retirement. You are able to reduce the amount of taxes you pay now in your high income years and pay a much smaller tax bill when you retire and are in a much lower tax bracket. The catch is that there is a limited amount of contribution room, which is why you have to be smart and make the most of it. And that takes us to our first mistake, using the RRSP as a savings account. This is frustrating because the name itself is misleading. It has the word savings in the name, but really the RRSP should be used as an investing account. The real power of the RRSP is to invest in the long term and have your investments grow and compound tax-free year after year. But using your RRSP as a savings account is frankly wasting its power. Interest rates are historically low, so your savings account at a big bank will pay you around 0.1% in interest. That is pitiful. Even the best savings account in Canada, EQ Bank, only pays 1.25%, and that doesn't even match inflation. You'll barely earn any interest income, and so you're barely saving any money on taxes and Anyway. Instead, if you invest in quality stocks and ETFs and hold them in an RSP, you can reliably earn over 7% every single year, and that's the kind of income you want to save taxes on. I talk about this in greater detail in my TFSA mistakes video. A lot of those mistakes apply to both the TFSA and the RSP, so make sure you check that video out as well. The RSP is more complicated and there's a lot more that can go wrong, so that's what I wanna focus on in this video. But here's the bottom line. To build long-term wealth, hold investments in your RSP. Leave your savings out of it. Just like the TFSA, you have a limited amount of contribution room and it is your responsibility to keep track of how much available room you have. But unlike the TFSA, your RSP room depends on your income and there is no minimum age limit. So even if you are a teenager, as long as you earned income, you can open an RRSP before the age of 18. Here's how it works. Your RRSP contribution room will be 18% of your earned income from the previous year. Earned income includes your regular employment income from your job, plus your net business income and net rental income. Notice that earned income does not include investment income. So dividends and capital gains do not earn you RRSP room. Let's say you run an incorporated business and you decide not to pay yourself a salary and you only pay yourself in dividends, this does not count as earned income, so you won't earn any RRSP contribution room. Also note, this 18% amount is capped at an annual maximum. For 2022, this maximum is $29,210. So if you make $200,000 a year, you don't get 18% of that in RRSP room. You're capped at $29,000. But if you make $100,000 a year, you'll gain 18% of that or $18,000 in RRSP room. But this is important. You'll only gain this new room next year when you file your tax return. So if you're a new Canadian and you just started working this year, you can't put any money into your RSP yet. You only gain that RSP contribution room next year when you file your taxes. You gain TFSA room as soon as you start living in Canada, but the RSP is one year behind since the government doesn't know how much money you earned until you file your taxes. And just like the TFSA, unused contribution room is not lost. It gets carried forward. So don't worry if you can't max out your RSP every year. Remember, it's your responsibility to know your available room and stay below your limit. Luckily, you don't have to calculate your RSP room by hand. The government does it for you. After you file your tax return in the spring, you'll receive a notice of assessment. And at the bottom, it will tell you your available RSP room based on your income. But throughout the year, it is your responsibility to track all of your contributions and stay below this number. 
Do not over contribute to your RSP. The penalties will be severe. If you exceed your limit, you will be charged a penalty of 1% every single month on this excess amount. That's 12% a year in fees. That's huge and almost as bad as credit card debt. So please avoid this. There is no investment that's worth a guaranteed loss of 12%. So stay within your limit. Technically, the government gives you a buffer of $2,000 above your limit before you get penalized, but don't try to game the system and take advantage of this. You won't be able to deduct this $2,000. It's just there to give you some leeway if you make an honest mistake. One of the common mistakes that get people in trouble is over-contributing because of pension adjustments. If your employer offers you an RSP or pension plan matching program, then your employer's contributions will also take away from your available room. If I put in $5,000 into my job's pension plan, and my employer matches that $5,000, my available room goes down by $10,000. Even though half that money didn't come from me, it's still treated as a contribution. So keep that in mind when planning out your RSP contributions for the year. This is still a great deal. If your employer is matching your RRSP contributions, that's free money, so definitely take advantage of it. But if your employer does not match your contributions, you should avoid these employer RRSP programs. Generally speaking, employer RRSP programs will take money out of each paycheck and put it into a mutual fund where you will have no control or flexibility with your money. And on top of that, they will charge you enormous management fees, usually around two or 3%. That's huge, and what are you really paying for? Instead, you can open your own RSP account with a broker like Questrade, which is my personal favorite, and you will have total control of what to do with your money. You can even replicate the same investment portfolio by buying ETFs at a fraction of the cost of mutual funds. ETFs will usually only charge you between 0.1% and 0.6% in management fees. That will save you a ton of money in the long run. Again, if your employer offers matching contributions, then take advantage of it and max out that free money. Sure, you'll be stuck paying high fees in a mutual fund, but you are doubling your money right off the bat, so it's well worth it. But if your job doesn't offer any matching, then skip it and open your own RRSP account. One incentive your employer RRSP plan will advertise is the ability to reduce the taxes from each paycheck. Instead of paying taxes, contributing to an RSP, then waiting a whole year to receive that tax refund, why not reduce the taxes from each paycheck? That way, you get to enjoy that tax refund throughout the year rather than waiting for one large check. That's great, but you don't need an employer RSP plan to do that. You can do that on your own and it's very easy. You just need to fill out a T1213 form called the request to reduce tax deductions at source. I'll be making a whole video about this, but all you have to do is send the form to the CRA and when they approve it, give it to your boss or HR department. That form is basically a promise you make with the government that you will contribute, let's say $5,000 to your RSP by the end of the year. Now, every paycheck you get throughout the year will be a little bit larger because you'll be taxed less. You'll be taxed as if you already claimed a $5,000 RSP deduction. You're just early. So now you'll receive the same tax refund, but instead of waiting until next year, you get to enjoy that tax refund right away, spread throughout the entire year. Just make sure you keep your promise and contribute at least $5,000 into your RSP this year. To be clear, I just chose $5,000 for this example. You can choose any number you want as long as it's within your available room. Here's another mistake that can lead to over-contributing. Unlike the TVSA, you do not get new RSP room on January 1st. The RSP calendar starts on March 2nd of every year, and this is because of the 60-day rule. When it comes to RSPs, the first 60 days of the new year are treated like the previous year. So if you contribute to your RSP before March 1st, the first 60 days, you can claim that tax deduction against your income for last year. This allows you to plan ahead and reduce your upcoming tax bill before you file your tax return in the spring. But if you have maxed out your RSP, do not contribute any more money until March 2nd. Sure, it's a new year in January, but not when it comes to RSPs. January and February, the first 60 days, are still treated like last year, so you're still maxed out. Technically speaking, you won't know exactly how much new RSP room you'll gain until you actually file your tax return, but you can make a reasonable estimation. Remember, take 18% of your earned income from the previous year, and that will be your new RSP room. And if you wanna to contribute to your RSP 
before the March 1st deadline, I recommend using the instant deposit feature with Quest Trade. I have a whole video tutorial showing you step by step how to make instant deposits, so check that out. This is one of the many reasons why Quest Trade is my favorite online broker in Canada. And if you'd like to get started, click my referral link in the box below and you'll get $50 in commission free trade rebates for the first 30 days when you sign up. That basically means that your first 10 stock trades will be commission free. That saves you $50, plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. And when it comes to your available room, only the money you put into an RSP counts as a contribution. Any income earned inside the RSP will not take away your available room. So even if your RSP is maxed out, if you earn money from capital gains, dividends, or drifts, this will not push you over your limit. So don't worry. This is the exact same with the TFSA, and I talked about this point in greater detail in my TFSA mistakes video. Here's another mistake to avoid for both the RSP and the TFSA. Do not hold risky or speculative assets in your RSP. These include penny stocks, cannabis stocks, IPOs, crypto ETFs, anything that's incredibly volatile and likely to crash and burn. If you gamble and lose in your RSP, not only will you lose money, but you will permanently lose that precious contribution room. It's gone and you never get it back. And unlike a non-registered account, there is no downside to selling a stock at a loss in an RSP. You don't get to claim a capital loss and you don't get to reduce your taxes. You just lose money with no benefit at all. So in an RSP, hold quality established companies that have a solid future. Do not gamble in an RSP. RSP. And I would encourage you to prioritize US dividend stocks and ETFs in your RSP since only the RSP account will allow you to waive the 15% withholding tax on US dividends. Again, I talk about this point in much greater detail in my TFSA mistakes video, so please check that out. Here in this video, I want to focus on the more interesting mistakes specific to the RRSP. Now let's talk about claiming the RSP tax deduction. This is very important. You do not need to claim the RSP tax deduction right away. Just because you put money into your RSP this year does not mean that you have to claim that tax deduction this year. You can carry forward that tax deduction to a future year where you'll be in a higher tax bracket and thus that deduction will save you even more money in taxes. Let's look at an example. Let's say you live in Ontario and you make a small income of $45,000. That puts you in a low tax bracket with a marginal tax rate of 20%. If you contribute $10,000 into your RSP and you claim that tax deduction, you will save 20% of that. So you'll receive $2,000 as a tax refund. That's great, but we're still in the lowest tax bracket, so we're getting the smallest possible benefit from this RSP deduction. Remember, I don't have to claim this tax deduction right away. I can put the money into my RSP and let it grow tax-free, but I can choose to carry forward that deduction to next year if I expect a larger income. Back to my example, if next year my salary increases to $65,000, now I'm in a larger tax bracket with a higher marginal tax rate of 30%. Since I carried forward that RSP deduction, now I can claim that same $10,000 deduction, but I save 30% of that. So now I get $3,000 as a tax refund. I just gained an extra $1,000 in tax savings just for waiting one year. To drive this point home, let's say I carry forward that tax deduction for five years, and now my salary has made a huge jump to $115,000. Now, I'm in a high tax bracket with a marginal tax rate of 43%. Now, if I claim that same $10,000 RSP deduction, I save 43% of that. So I get $4,300 as a tax refund. That's more than double the tax savings if I had claimed it in the lower tax bracket. Some common advice you'll hear is don't contribute to your RSP when you're young. Wait until you have a high income to make contributions, but that's only half true. You should definitely contribute to your RSP even if you are in a low tax bracket. The earlier you invest, the more time your investments will have to grow tax-free inside your RSP. Just don't claim those tax deductions right away. Carry those forward to a future year to get real tax savings. That's what I did. I invested in my RSP while I was in university and making very little money from side jobs. But I started early and I let my investments grow tax-free for three years until I had a high paying job and then I decided to claim those RSP deductions which saved me a lot of money. But you have to plan ahead. Just because your income will grow next year doesn't mean that you should wait. It's only worth carrying forward those tax deductions if your higher income will push you to a higher tax bracket. Back to my example, if I'm making $65,000 a year in Ontario and next year my salary increases to $70,000, I'll still be in the same tax bracket with a marginal tax rate of 30%. So whether I claim the deduction this year or next year, I'll get the same $3,000 in savings, so there's no point in waiting. If you're going to be in the same tax bracket next year, then don't wait. 
Claim the RSP deduction right away and invest that tax refund. That will give your investments a whole extra year to grow tax-free. Make sure you plan ahead and run those numbers. And remember, each province has different tax brackets. In this example, I was just talking about Ontario. You'll notice that I said to invest your tax refund. Do not waste your tax refund on frivolous spending. The whole point of the RSP is to reduce your taxes now, giving you more money to invest with today and let that money grow for years and years. When you receive your tax refund, I would encourage you to invest that money back into your RSP to gain another refund next year or put that money in your TFSA. Or if you have kids, put it in an RESP to gain that 20% of free government grants. Don't leave free money on the table. Take advantage of these tax sheltered accounts and check out my RESP explained videos to see how the RESP works and how to get the free government grant money for your kids. When it comes to RRSP withdrawals, there is a ton to talk about. In fact, I already made a whole video on RRSP withdrawals, so please check that out. But this is important. You should not withdraw from an RSP until you are in retirement. Technically, you're not locked in. You can always choose to withdraw from your RSP early, but you shouldn't do it for two main reasons. First, whenever you withdraw from your RSP, you will be fully taxed on that amount, as if it was regular employment income. So if you're in a high tax bracket, with a marginal tax rate of 40%, you will be taxed 40% of that withdrawal amount. That's huge. The point of the RSP is to withdraw that money when you're in retirement, where you'll be in a much lower tax bracket, and so you'll pay far less in taxes. The second downside is that when you withdraw from an RSP, you don't regain that contribution room. It's gone forever. This is different from a TFSA, where you can withdraw money and gain that room back next year. But with the RRSP, as soon as you make a withdrawal, that room is gone. So now you've missed out on a lifetime of tax shelter growth, and that's a huge opportunity cost. I I always encourage you guys to invest in the long term, but this mentality is even more important with the RRSP. Always keep this in mind. The money you invest in an RRSP should be money that you will not touch for years, even for decades. Withdrawing early from an RSP should only be used as a last resort. I've said this many times. It is so important to build up an emergency savings fund that you can rely on if you need money you never want to be forced to sell your investments. But if your savings just aren't enough, then withdraw from your non-registered account or even your TFSA if you have to. Those accounts are much more flexible and you will regain that TFSA room next year. But if you withdraw from the RSP, you never get that room back. So please avoid it. So there you have it guys. Those are some of the biggest mistakes to avoid in your RRSP. This is the third video I've made on the RSP and there's still so much more to talk about. So stay tuned for more RSP videos where I'll discuss the two exceptions that allow you to withdraw from your RSP without paying taxes. And that's the home buyer's plan and the lifelong learning plan. I'll also discuss strategies to reduce your taxes during retirement using a RIF, spousal income splitting, and other considerations like OAS clawback. Our RSPs are incredibly powerful, but they can be complicated. So I'll be here to help break it down. Thanks for watching guys, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube, and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, at Canadian T-shirt, click the link in the box below, or click the links on my homepage. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.